What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB and we are here today with a review for Ready to Love You Guys. What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB and we are here today with a review for Ready to Love Season 4 Episode 6. The episode was titled Opposites to Track. Alright you guys, so before we get into this video, I want to say sorry for this video being late. Last night, I, yesterday, actually started yesterday about 4 o'clock, I had a terrible headache. That headache lasted forever. I still slightly have the headache. I couldn't see, so my eyesight, everything was starting to spin, so I couldn't make anything out. Then I started throwing up. I didn't. I started that at four o'clock in the afternoon, and didn't stop that until four a.m. So I'm feeling a little bit better right now. I'm feeling a little bit better, a little bit, not that much, but I feel better enough to do this review for you guys. Also. I do want to address a comment that was left in my review for the last Ready to Love. So someone left in the comment section that when I was describing, I don't, uh, I don't even know whose breasts I was talking about, but someone said that you know it felt creepy, which I, you know, I, I accept that. And to the person who told me that they felt that it was creepy, I can apologize for that. Now, if anybody else felt that way, please let me know. Now the one thing about that, uh, the one part about that comment that did rub me the wrong way, was comparing me to Troy. Please don't do that. Like we can, you can have, you know, you can tell me that something made you feel some type of way. That's fine, but don't compare me to somebody like a Troy, because I'm no, I'm nothing like him. Don't do that. And then before we get into this video, if you guys are watching this video and you guys like the content, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that notification bell button, so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else. So with that all being said, let's go ahead and get into this episode review, shall we? All right, you guys. So this episode, it's the ladies' turn. You know, they're going to go out on a date with the guys. And at the end of the week, they will be sending someone home. Now, Tommy gives the ladies a little bit of a curveball in this episode. So he tells them, think about who your number one is. We all know who most of the ladies' number one is. Chris, I, I think her number one is Ron, but we're going to talk about that in a little bit. You know, Amber's number one is Chris. We know Vernicia's number one is Joel. We know who is Kyra's number one. We're going to talk about that too because I, I was confused about that one. But we, like I said, we pretty much know who most of the ladies' number one is. So the first person we see go out on a date is Alexis. So her date is with Ron. I was confused. She's, one of, she's another person that I was confused about who her number one is because I could have swore, I would have thought from last week's episode, that Ron was her number well not last week but the week before I would have thought Ron was her number one but I'm guessing her number one is still AJ which I don't understand why AJ is still her number one but whatever so she and eight Ron go putt putt golfing and she is dressed like a curtain but you know that's not my business so they have a little conversation oh oh god please don't tell me about to throw up again are you did you I don't think so I think we're good guys um so yeah she says that her number one is Ron they're on a date with each other it was a you know I will give this week's episode I will say this week's episode the dates were so much better I'm cool with putt putt golf that's fun all like I said all the dates this week were better than we got in the last few episodes nobody's at home they actually went out places so, you know, they're getting a little close with each other. He's, you know, he's, you know, getting some little squeezes and some hugs in. Cool. Nothing wrong with that. So then, you know, she decides to tell him, you know, she tells him about her, you know, being a woman of God. And he tells her he's kind of like a rock star, which I didn't understand what that means. I guess he beats his own drum. I don't know what that means, but maybe that's what that means. So then she talks to him about him feeling chrysanthemum. And what does that mean? So, from what I gather from his conversation with her, it feels like, you know, she's higher than Chrysanthemum at this point, which I, I think Chrysanthemum, and I think she knows that. He said that they talk on the phone, you know, it's just so much with him and her that she's higher than Chris. I would hope so. But like I said, we don't talk about Chris. So, but the thing that I had the question, here's what I had the question about. Like I said, a few minutes ago, I thought AJ was her number one. I, you know, I, at first I thought he was, you know, Ron was a number one, but then she talked about AJ. So it's just like, 
where is she landing at? Like, I, I didn't understand that, but whatever. He's She's his number one. Uh, I guess he's her number two, number one. I don't know. But she likes him and she likes AJ. So next we see Amber. So Amber, she went on a date with AJ as well. Actually, two people went on a date with AJ. Amber was the first one. So this is actually Amber and AJ's first time going out with each other. And Amber said that she never really, they've never had conversations with each other. She feels that AJ is arrogant, which I, I will give her that he is 1000% arrogant. Because if you guys look at the past week's episodes, it's always the women coming after him. First, it was um, Alexis. Then it was that other one, Ida. Then it was Stacy. So yeah, he's he's used to the women coming after him. Now it could be production, we don't know. But from what we have saw, the ladies approach him, he doesn't approach them. So Amber clocked that. So he he doesn't feel like he's arrogant. I'm like, how do you not feel that like you're arrogant? But you know, whatever. But he tells her, you know what, he's willing to put in the work. I sincerely doubt that one. I sincerely doubt it. I think AJ is just playing the game at this point. If we're going to be real, I think he's just playing the game. But let's move on. All right, you guys. So next up, we have Chris and Chrysanthemum. They go on a date with each other. And Chrysanthemum actually, honestly, in the first half of that, in, in her interview, she got on my nerves. Because she's talking about she needs to have her options open because, you know, since, since Ron has another number one, that's Alexis, I got to keep my options open. It's like, duh, common sense. You're on a dating show. Why not get to know everybody? So that way you have one foot, you know, you know, you like Ron, but then you'd be like, you know what? I like Ron, but I also like this person over here. Then I like that person. That's what dating is. You get to know many different people, not just one person. I don't know what some of these people are thinking. Like, and we'll talk about that when they get to deliberation. So... Now, we did find out a little bit more information about um, Chris. We found out that she grew up in Italy until she was seven years old because she said her mom didn't, she, her mom only wanted an Italian child. I don't understand what that means, but just because you live in Italy, uh, you know what? I'm going to keep my opinions to myself. So she said she met her dad about six years ago and they look exactly alike. So th that was the question. Where did your mom and daddy meet at for her to, for her to want to live in Italy because she only wants a Italian baby you're not Italian if you're mixed with something else you're not full-blooded Italian you do realize she didn't I, you know what I'm not gonna talk about her mama let's move on Chris he said that his dad denied him most of his life I'm like well damn well you know you did say your dad had what like nine kids with different women so that ain't a shocker there but you know he said his dad denied him and I'm going to assume that him and his dad didn't get to know each other because he said he got a call one day that his dad had died. That's kind of sad. So then Chrysanthemum, she's talking about her mom. You know, she said her mom is not affectionate, which inadvertently rubbed off on her and she's the same way and that she doesn't do relationships. So then I was thinking to myself, if you don't do relationships, why are you on this show? Doesn't make a lot of sense. We're going to move on. Next up, let's talk about Amber. So she went out on another date with Joel, and this is their first time actually going out on an individual date with one another. I enjoyed this date with those two. You can definitely see that there's a vibe there. You can definitely see that there's chemistry between them. So Joel asked her, you know, her thoughts on getting married. Well, actually she asked him, you know, does he want to get married again? He said, absolutely. So then he asked her about, you know, what is she, <laughs> Excuse me, I didn't mean to do that. She he asked her, you know, what does she feel about him being about eleven years older than she is, and having you know two kids. So she said, when it comes to the kids, she doesn't want to replace their mother, which I respect her that answer. But she says she loves kids, so she's open to it. And then as far as age, she didn't address that. But I mean, age age ain't a, age is no issue. I sh I would feel that age shouldn't be an issue for anybody. Unless, you know, nah, I, really, I, really, I mean, I wouldn't say age should be an issue. Now, for me, it might sound ageist if I say it, but I got to keep it real with you guys. I don't have a problem. I would actually date an older woman, but for me, 
I want children. That's the one thing for me. And I find that when you meet older women who have kids, they don't want to start. I mean, anybody who has kids that are older and grown, they don't want to start over. So that would be it for me. Just not me just wanting to have kids of my own. But I'm not, you know, I wouldn't be opposed to dating someone that's older than me. I wouldn't be opposed to dating older. I just would want kids. That, that would be the dilemma in a relationship with me. But I did like their date. Um, so let's move on, you guys. All right, guys. Next, Jason and Liz, they went on a date with each other. I'm, now, when I looked at Jason on his date, I'm like, dude, you could have wore something different. Now, I know my shirt ain't, you know, up to par, but it's Saturday morning. And I just woke up, so I'm not going out on a date. But his shirt, mostly that shirt, it looked very dingy. I know mine is too, but again, it's Saturday morning. I just woke up. He could have dressed better for that date, to be to be quite honest with you. He could have dressed a lot better for that date. Because that shirt was just ill-fitted. It looked a little dingy. He had on some blue jeans. I'm like, dude, this is a date. And you got Liz here looking put together, but you know, whatever. So they sit down, they have, a, they have you know, their lunch or dinner, whichever one you want to call it. And he says, you know, he asked her, is there anything that you want to ask me that you, you know, felt may, feel that I may not have already, you know, expressed to you. So she asked him his thoughts on having sex before marriage. He stuttered because he was talking about, you know, celibacy, abstinence, all that kind of stuff. He's cool with it, but it would be hard for him. What does that mean? You cool with it, but it's hard for you. How is it cool, but it's going to be hard? Either you with it or you're not with it. Because I feel like if someone says to me, if I said, hey, I'm celibate or I'm abstinent or whatever, and the person that I'm with says, you know, I'm cool with the fact that you don't want to have sex until marriage, but that might be difficult for me. What I would internalize that to mean is, okay, you were, you want to be in a relationship with me, allegedly. You want to be in a relationship with me. You know that I don't want to have sex until I'm married, but All right, you guys, cool Next up, it. Bernicia and Diedrich. They went on a date with each other and... Diedrich tells Vernicia that he has a connection with her. I would have never guessed it. Really wouldn't have guessed it. And then for Diedrich, you know, even when he when we first met him in the preview episode, he was talking about how he wants more kids. He wants more kids and he wants a boy. I don't think is going to be that type to give you a boy or another child at that. So, you know, she was talking to him. She was telling him how she spent her day running around with her daughters. So then he asked her, you know, does she have time for a relationship? And she said, you know, you make time for whatever, what you want. And that is 1000% true. Um, so then I don't know how this happened, how this conversation came up, but it came up about, you know, she told him that she wants a man to be, you know, a leader to be the head of the household. So he, then he said, you know, people have different interpretations of what a leader and head of household means. Most he's, you know, he says some people think that a man should pay all the bills. She says, oh no, I don't need that. Like, I've been taking care of me and my three girls by myself for quite some time now, so I don't need that. Now, would it be nice if I had a man that came in and took up some of the slack? Absolutely. So then um, he tells her that she makes him nervous and that was a turnoff for her right then and there because she, I guess she wants someone that is going to, like she said, be a leader. I, and I, I guess for her, a leader doesn't back down is assertive you know know what they want i guess stuff like that <clears throat> but nonetheless she made him he made her nervous and she made him nervous he turned her off so then we see the ladies they meet up with tommy to discuss the men now they talk about their dates i don't really need my notes anymore so they talk about their dates and it's very interesting if you watch the ladies reactions if you watched um so if you look told, they first talked about it. Alexis went first and she talked about her date with Ron. And I was like, oh God, Chris. And immediately when, you know, Alexis was talking about the date, she talked about him saying that she was number one. You could see Chris's reaction to that. And she was, you know, a little, it, it, could, it could be conceived, it could be perceived that she was in her feelings about that. Then Amber talked about her date with Joelle and the fact that Joelle kissed her on the cheek 
And at the end of the date, she kissed him back on the cheek. And Bernicia felt some type of way about that. Then when Liz talked about her date with Jason, Kyra felt some type of way, which actually threw me for a loop. I did not realize that, I, I didn't realize that he was her top. That was a little interesting to me. I did not gather, I never gathered at all that AJ was not Kyra's number one, that it was actually Jason. Never gathered that. So, th so those three women, you know, looked the type of way. Um, now then when they started discussing the bottom, they also, you know, we had a few women that looked the type of way. So when Chris was talking about her date with, um, with eight, with Chris, she said that there was no romantic connection there and Amber looked some type of way. I'm like, ooh. And then when all the ladies said that AJ was in their bottom, um, Kyra looked some type of way. And I'm just like, again, confusion, 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 confusion. Like I was confused. Who is Kyra's number one? So I'm, I'm, so, so I'm, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that Kyra's number one and number two so number one for Kyra might be Jason and then number two is AJ. I'm confused. But, you know, she was talking about how the date was romantic and he made up for the date that they went out on where he didn't pay for it. Well, he didn't pay for this one either. So production paid for this one. So that's why it was better. Go out on a date with him off camera and let's see how it, you know, pans out for you. So then also Vernicia talked about how, you know, Dietrich was not her number one. And some of the other ladies chimed in as well about Dietrich not being her number one, you know, being in their bottom as well. So then we see as Kyra and Dietrich went on a date and then AJ and Alexis went on a date. Now, here's where I'm confused at when it comes to these elimination dates. Do they not know that this is an do they? I mean, I, I guess they don't tell them that this is an elimination date. They just tell them to get dressed up and come out. Because AJ, when he was on that date with Alexis, he thought that this was just a, a, a just a regular date. And I'm like, it might not be a regular date for you, but it might be your last date. It really should have been his last date, to be quite honest with you. Because I'm, I'm in agreement with what Amber said about AJ. AJ is playing the game. But the ladies ultimately decided that Diedrich is not ready to love, which I'm actually cool with that. After what he did to Tressa, you know, after how he played Tressa, I'm cool with him going home. But I really should. I really felt like they should have sent two people home as well, like the men did. They should have sent Diedrich and AJ home, but they didn't. But that's a review, you guys. Um, again, again, I do apologize, you guys. I I know that my energy is a little low, but I didn't want to go and not give you guys this video. So I will see you guys in the next video. Um, Sunday, I got three videos to do. I'll do Marriage and Medicine polls and i'm going to add a new show which is on zeus it's called baddies atl if you guys watch it um i'll see you guys then so um do me a solid favor you guys hit that subscribe button on this channel hit that notification bell button so you guys are aware when i drop anything else and share this video until the next one stay safe you guys take care of yourselves wash your hands wear your mask and socially distance well they said we don't have to wear a mask anymore if you're fully vaccinated i'm still gonna elect to wear my mask but yeah you guys that's it and i'll see you guys in the next one Bye.